To open Apple Provisioner, two-finger click and go ahead and click Show Package Contents. And from Contents, you'll go into the Mac OS directory and click into the applet. It's very important to open this application this way the first time you open it. From here, we can see the application. Pretty simple, we just need to choose our USB installer, which I'll put a link to in the one below. It's very important to use uh, a high-speed 3.1 USB uh, drive. And then, of course, we've downloaded uh, install Mac OS Big, Big Sur application from the App Store. So we have a fresh copy of the latest update there. And uh, after that, we just need to choose our install options, which are going to be uh, add Wi-Fi. What we're doing here, though, is opening up Disk Utility. We have our flash, our brand new flash drive plugged in. We're going to go ahead and change the file format to Mac OS Journal, but before we do that, we need to select it. And then I'm going to go ahead and just name this My Volume and click Erase. And let it do its thing. So, brand new flash drive's been formatted, renamed to My Volume, and we should be ready to go to connect it to the Provisioner app. I also went with a 128 gig uh, byte flash drive, uh, which is above the requirements, but it's a good way to just set yourself up for success. Now I can just navigate to that flash drive, click open, navigate to the uh, Big Sur app, which is automatically chosen for us, and now I'm going to add my Wi-Fi code information. Now that we have the Wi-Fi SSID name, and the password written in the password box and the verify box. We're going to choose the shutdown option after install. And after that, we should be ready to go ahead and click continue and let this guy go ahead and write. Before we do that, though, I'm going to open up the activity monitor on this pretty new M1 Mac and just see what the memory pressure is as we run this utility. We get a confirmation box and a prompt for an admin code, which we'll go ahead and type in to trigger the install. Try that one more time. All right, so now Mac Provisioner is running, and we can see that it actually takes very little uh, system energy as it goes through its processes. This installation will take a little while depending on what hardware you're using to do it. Probably took, uh, let's just say 10 minutes. I was hoping to have the timer or the clock uh, displayed in this uh, screencast, but it wasn't. I'm not recording it again. So we'll just go ahead and uh, run uh, fast forward through this clip so it looks like it's happening faster. We're currently watching the data write at four times the speed that it is actually, or that it actually happened at. So getting Mac Provisioner to work can be a little challenging, uh, depending on your setup. There's a lot of moving parts. You got a big file you're writing data to very quickly on a USB. So you can check what's going on and what can and can't cannot uh, work with this by going into your console, clicking on Log Reports, and then the Mac Provisioner log. From there, you can read the logs uh, for the. Um, uh, output of the application. You noticed I'm, I'm highlighting the disk write speed check. That was a cause for failure for me in early attempts to build a USB drive that would install macOS Big Sur. 
and uh, after erasing a hard drive on a client computer. So I found that out by reading this log file and then I bought a newer, faster USB 3.1. So just some good fun to know information here that you can read while your data is writing to your USB. And here we can see our progress bar go from halfway to finish in about one second. And we have a green icon that shows that this was successful and that the new disk has been e dismounted from the computer's operating system. And now it's ready to plug in on a client machine and erase install. Thanks for watching. Bye.